Hola, welcome to my channel. My name is Axel and today we're going to be talking about Cyclades. The objective of this video is for you to learn how to set up the game and how to play it. So, let's go. Welcome to Cyclades. In the Cyclades archipelago, off the coast of a not yet unified Greece, the great ancient cities are growing and struggling against one another to establish their supremacy under the benevolent gaze of the gods. Demonstrate the supremacy of your city by being the first player to control two metropolises at the end of the cycle. There are several ways to obtain a metropolis. The first is through intellectual development. This requires you to collect four philosopher cards, which you will immediately exchange for a metropolis. Another option is through economic development. This requires you to control all four types of buildings which you will exchange for a metropoli. Lastly, you may attempt to conquer the metropolis of another player and take control of it. So now that you know what the game is about, let me show you how to set up the game. After everyone has chosen a color, each player will collect the matching screen, eight soldiers, eight boats, three territory markers, one offering token, and five gold pieces, which he will hide behind his screen. Place the three game boards in the center of the table. Pay close attention to the number at the bottom of the game boards since these ones relate to the number of players. With less players, the map will be smaller and with more players, the map will be bigger. Afterwards, each player will place two soldiers and two boats on the game board as shown on the rulebook depending on the number of players. Place the priest cards and the philosopher cards in their corresponding spots on the game board. Shuffle the mythological creature cards and place them on the reserve spot on the board. Place the five miniatures near the playing area. Also place the metropolis, temples, universities, ports, fortresses, prosperity markers, combat dice, and gold pieces near the playing area. Don't forget to also place the four god tiles in a nearby area. Okay, so the board is ready, your friends are coming over, we're only missing one important thing, and that is how to play the game, so let me teach you. A game of cyclades is played over a series of cycles. Each cycle has six phases. The first one is the mythological creatures, then the gods, revenues, offerings, performing actions, and finishing with end of round. In the very first cycle of the game, we're gonna reveal a single mythological creature card and place it in the leftmost space on the track. In the second cycle of the game, we're gonna shift one space to the right any available creature cards and fill the empty spaces with new cards from the deck. Similarly, at the beginning of the third cycle, we're gonna slide to the right any available creature cards that were not bought during the round and we're gonna fill in the empty spaces with new cards from the deck. Starting the fourth cycle, if there is a creature card in the rightmost space of the track, it will be discarded and everything else will slide all the way to the right and will fill in the empty spaces with new cards from the deck. Let's say that the Kraken card was bought during the action phase. That space is going to remain empty until the beginning of the next cycle. Starting in the next cycle, we're going to update the track as previously shown. By discarding the creature in the rightmost space of the track, and filling in all the empty spaces with new cards from the deck. Finally, in the rare case that the draw pile is empty, shuffle the discard pile to create a new draw pile. In the gods phase, you're going to be shuffling the four god tiles and placing them randomly on the spaces above the god Apollo. The number of gods available per cycle will depend on the player count. For example, in a game with four players, there will be four gods available each cycle. In a game with three players, there will be three gods available. But in a two-player game, there will be four available gods in each cycle since each player will be receiving an extra offering token. In the revenue phase, each player will receive one gold coin for every prosperity marker that they control. This includes all prosperity markers printed on the board as well as all prosperity markers given by Apollo. In the offerings phase, players will take turns according to player order to gain the support of one of the available gods. For example, the red player would like to gain the favor of Poseidon. To do so, he's gonna have to offer an amount of gold that he considers is necessary. 
as long as he doesn't surpass the amount that he has in his reserve. When the blue player turns comes around, most of the gods already have an offering. This means that he's gonna have to outbid the offering of an opponent and in this case he wants to pay 3 gold for Ares. Since there can only be one player per god, the green player is gonna have to make a new offering with the special condition that it cannot be the same god where it was outbid. At some point during the offering phase, one or more players may have to choose a polo either because of their own choice or because they can no longer compete with the other player offerings. At the end of the offering phase, each player will pay the amount of gold that they promised except for the players that chose Apollo. Now we're gonna move on to the performing action space, starting with Ares. The favor of Ares is gonna allow you to recruit one soldier which you may place in any of your available idols. Additionally, if you'd like to recruit another soldier, this is gonna cost you 2 coins, a 3rd soldier 3 coins, and a 4th soldier 4 coins. Ares will also allow you to build fortresses at the cost of 2 gold coins each. The effect of these fortresses provide a defensive bonus as we will see later on in the video. Finally, we have Ares special ability. This will allow you to pay 1 gold coin to move as many soldiers as you want from one of your islands to another as long as these are connected by your own boats similar to a bridge. This action will allow you to take control of empty islands as well as to try to conquer the islands of another player. There is an important rule regarding this action and that is that you may not attack the last island of another player unless this action will grant you the victory. Battles between units are resolved as following. Both players, the attacker and the defender, will roll one of the special dice. They will add to this result the number of troops involved in the battle with a value of 1 each, plus the number of fortresses at the location of the battle with a value of 1 each. The battle may result in one of three outcomes. If the attacker wins, the defender is gonna have to eliminate one of his troops, and if he still has troops present, there will be another round of battle. If the outcome results in a tie, both players were gonna have to eliminate one of their troops. If the defender wins, the attacker is gonna have to eliminate one of his troops and decide if he wants to keep battling or if he wants to retreat his troops to one of his islands that are connected by his boats. Poseidon's favor is very similar to Ares. First, he's gonna let you recruit one of your boats and place it anywhere adjacent to one of your islands either on an empty space or with a space that has another one of your boats. You will then have the option to recruit more boats by paying the price shown on the tile and placing them anywhere around your island following the previously mentioned rules. The building action is going to allow you to pay 2 gold pieces per port that you may want to build in one of your islands. The port provides a defensive bonus as we will explain in a moment. Poseidon's special ability is going to allow you to move a group of boats up to 3 spaces for every gold piece that you pay. During this movement, you may add more boats or abandon them as you move. If you end your movement on a space with another player's boat, this will trigger a naval battle. Similar to land-based battles, naval battles also requires the players to use one of the special dice. You will add to this result plus one for every boat that is involved in this battle. And the defender is going to add plus one if the location of the battle is adjacent to one of his islands that has a port. If the attacker wins, the defender is going to have to eliminate one of his boats and in case he has more boats, he is going to have to decide if he wants to retreat or stay to battle another round. If the battle results in a tie, both players are going to have to eliminate one of their boats. Finally, if the defender is the winner, the attacker is going to have to eliminate one of his boats and decide if he wants to keep battling or retreat to one adjacent space. Next, we have Zeus. Zeus is going to allow you to recruit a priest card and if you so desire, pay 4 gold coins for another priest card. These cards function as a permanent investment when it comes to the offering space. For example, the green player offered to pay 4 gold pieces to get Zeus favored. He possesses 2 priest cards which reduces the price by 1 gold piece each. Thus, the green player will only have to pay 2 gold pieces. It's important to mention that these priest cards are permanent. Additionally, Zeus building action is going to allow you to build temples with a cost of 2 gold pieces each. For each temple that you control, you will get a 1 gold piece reduction when it comes to buying the mythological creatures. Note that the rule states that you will always have to pay at least 1 gold piece despite the reductions obtained from temples and priest cards. Zeus special action is going to allow you to cycle through the mythological creatures available on the track. 
by paying one gold piece you're gonna be able to discard any creature card and replace it with a new one from top of the deck. Note that if there is no creatures available during your turn, you will not be able to perform this action. Obtaining Athena's favor is gonna allow you to collect a philosopher card. You may also pay for gold pieces to obtain another philosopher card. Immediately after obtaining your fourth philosopher card, you will exchange them for a metropolis which you will place in one of your available islands on the board. Additionally, Athena is going to allow you to build universities at a cost of two gold pieces each, which is one of the four types of buildings that will be required to exchange them for a metropolis. Finally, we have the god Apollo. This god is different from the other gods because it can be chosen by more than one player. Apollo's favor will provide you with one gold coin. However, if you only control one island, it will give you four gold coins. Additionally, if you were the first player to choose Apollo, he will provide you with a prosperity marker which you will be able to place in one of your islands. Lastly, I'm gonna explain some of the mythological creature cards. The yellow player decided to buy Medusa by paying the two gold coins shown underneath the card. This will allow him to place the Medusa miniature in any island of the board. Troops on the same island's Medusa cannot be moved until the end of the yellow player's next turn, at which point the miniature will be removed. For our next example, we're gonna look at the Kraken. The effect of the Kraken card will allow you to place his miniature in any sea space on the map. Any boats on the chosen space will be automatically destroyed. Additionally, you're gonna have the option to pay one gold coin for every extra space you wanna move the Kraken, which will destroy any encountered boats. The Kraken is the only miniature in the game that will remain on the board until the card is bought again. As a last example, we have Pegasus. The wise green player found a way around yellow player's plans by using Pegasus, which allows him to move a group of his soldiers from one island to another, allowing him to launch an attack on the yellow player's metropoly. If at the end of a cycle there is one or more players that control two or more metropolis, the game ends. Otherwise, a new cycle will commence. And that's how you play a game of cyclades. If you're the first player to control two metropolis at the end of a cycle, then you will be declared the winner. In the rare situation that there is a tie, the tiebreaker relies on who has the most money hidden in the reserve. If you found this video useful, give it a like. I would also appreciate it if you guys could leave me in the comments below what you like or dislike about this video so I can continue to improve the quality of my content. If you would like to join me to learn more about board games, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.